Namo Didafa, good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life. I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking or in my way of life. We're reading Ajahn Tiradhamma's book, Working with the Five Hindrances. This is a section on attendings with mindfulness. <clears throat> and the development of the four attendings with mindfulness, Satipatthana, the hindrances are mentioned in a very different way. Thus, we are instructed to make a thorough investigation of these five hindrances in order to understand what they are, how they arise, how they cease, and how they may be prevented from arising in the future. That is, we are encouraged to do some serious work with them until they are resolved. And how bhikkhus does one in regard to phenomena abide contemplating a phenomena? Here, bhikkhus, in regard to phenomena, one abides contemplating phenomena in respect to the five hindrances. How? Here, if sensual desire is present within, one knows sensual desire is present within. If sensual desire is not present within, one knows sensual desire is not present within. And one knows how unarisen sensual desire can arise, how arisen sensual desire can be abandoned, and how abandoned sensual desire will not arise in the future. Again, if ill will is present, lethargy and drowsiness, restlessness and remorse, Doubt is present within. One knows doubt is present within. If doubt is not present within, one knows doubt is not present within. And one knows how unarisen doubt can arise, how arisen doubt can be abandoned, and how abandoned doubt will not arise in the future. In this way, with regard to phenomena, one abides contemplating phenomena internally, or one abides contemplating phenomena externally, or one abides contemplating phenomena both internally and externally. One abides contemplating the nature of arising in phenomena, or one abides contemplating the nature of passing away in phenomena, or one abides contemplating the nature of both arising and passing away in phenomena, or mindfulness that there are phenomena is established to the extent necessary for bare knowledge and right mindfulness. One abides independent, not clinging to anything in the world. The development of the four attendings with mindfulness follows a progression. First, there is awareness of body, then of feelings, then of conditions of mind. Through this progression, we develop an increasing strength and subtlety of awareness. Bodily sensations are fairly tangible. The three feeling tones are reasonably discernible, and then 16 conditions of mind are specifically mentioned. In general, then, it requires a significant increase in awareness to have clarity with regard to the great diversity of conditions of mind, not to mention their fluidity and rapidity of change. Then we come to the fourth theme of the attendings with mindfulness, development of awareness of specific phenomena, or dhamma, under five categories, one of which is the five hindrances. This comes at an advanced stage in the progression of developing mindfulness. 
If your mind is obsessed with desire or ill will, or overcome with sleepiness, restlessness, or doubt, it's hard to be clearly aware of these phenomena. That's why it's important to have a very good foundation in mindfulness by first developing awareness of body, feelings, and conditions of mind. Ideally, you will then be able to get a clearer perspective on the hindrances. Trying to be aware of them at the very beginning of practice, it is easy to be pulled into them or caught in doubt about them. What am I actually looking at? However, if you have a very good grounding and awareness of the body, you can always relate back to it or cross-reference it. What is the condition of the body? Is it lacking in energy? Or has it got too much energy? Through the body, you are able to recognize, oh, there is lethargy or there is restlessness. Thus, you can generate greater awareness of the hindrances through awareness of their expression and the condition of the body. Of course, developing mindfulness in a systematic progression is the general ideal. However, in real life, we are usually assailed by the hindrances in a variety of forms and intensities during the process of developing mindfulness and concentration. This is mostly in their undifferentiated form as wandering, distracting, disturbing thoughts, memories, or fantasies. Initially, we then try to sustain some continuity of focused attention and awareness of the meditation object, for example, mindfulness of the breath, as a principal intention. If some of the hindrances do seriously distract us from the meditation object, perhaps some of the exercises described in the following pages may be helpful for reducing their impact. However, it is generally difficult to engage in an objective and thorough investigation of them until some degree of concentrated collectedness and mindful clarity has been established. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.